All right, guys, welcome back to TD Fins Talk. The time has arrived. Game one of the NFL season for 2018 is less than, what is it, three days away, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, less than three days away, all right? Um, guys, I already told y'all before, if you're not excited, I don't know what's wrong with you, but the time has come, okay? I'm going to go ahead and break down um, basically the prediction of the game and my analysis on why the game will turn out that way, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and start and give you my prediction up front, okay? I have the Miami Dolphins winning their first game in the regular season at home versus the Tennessee Titans, which means, hey, the Tennessee Titans take their first loss, okay? I'm going to break down why they're going to take the loss and why the Dolphins are going to have a commanding lead. My estimation um, as far as um, score, I have a, a prediction of 34 to 17. And I, I already threw that out there. People say I'm crazy. Think what you want, okay? The, the prediction score that I have is 34 to 17 Miami Dolphins win impressively over Tennessee Titans, okay? Before I even get into how that's going to happen, let me give you the breakdown on points, okay? I have the Miami Dolphins offense being explosive in this game, scoring three touchdowns for 21 points, okay? I also have the Miami Dolphins offense um, stalling in, the, in basically on the plus side of the field two times, earning two field goals for three points, all right? That's going to bring it up to, what is it, 27 points? And the last touchdown, we will get one turnover on defense for a touchdown. The defense will score a touchdown. That is my prediction, giving us a total of 34 points. Now, the Tennessee Titans having 17. I locked them in for two touchdowns, both, both of them being offensive, and one field goal, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in, guys, okay? Let's talk about what we do know, okay? Let me briefly talk about the Dolphins, then I'll get in-depth with, with Tennessee, okay? Because it's not even about the Dolphins. If you subscribe to my channel, you, you pretty much already know a lot about the Dolphins just based off of what I talk about, okay? Um, but we do know with the Miami Dolphins um, that Devontae Parker is not playing, okay? That we are limited at the wide receiver position. We do have what we need to go into war, but we are limited. But the beautiful thing is we have players like Jakeem Grant, who's multifaceted, who's going to be running back kicks and running back um, punts, but also being that extra um, wide receiver. We have Kenny Stills, Danny Amendola. Um, you also have um, Albert Wilson. Um, these guys are going to pretty much be taking those starting roles in the receiver position, okay? Um, not to mention, King and Drake is going to be catching a lot of balls out of the backfield. This is the year for King and Drake out of the backfield, guys. I'm not even talking about running. We already know he's explosive running the ball, but catching balls out of the backfield, this is the year uh, where he's going to actually show up and show out, guys. Mark my words, you heard it here first, all right? Now, Tannehill looking as beautiful as ever. Come on, Tannehill, man. Hey, you, hey, guys, you can call it a male crush, whatever you want. I'm secure in who I am and my preference, whatever. But at the end of the day, I love me some Tannehill, baby. I love me some Tannehill. Tannehill is the truth. All you doubters, you know what you can do. I don't have to tell you. You already know. And Tannehill is going to shove it down your throat this year, okay? But Tannehill having a huge game. I see Tannehill having over 300 passing yards in game one. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 300, over 300 passing yards in game one, okay? That, that's a fact. Two throwing touchdowns, okay? And the offense will probably have one more rushing touchdown. Facts. You'll see it happen, guys. Mark my words. You heard it here first, okay? Tannehill's going to do his thing. He's going to be eating the Tennessee defense up. And then I'll explain why in a little bit, okay? Now, when it comes to uh, running back, we already know Frank Gore on uh, King and Drake. King and Drake's going to get the ball. Frank Gore's probably going to be doing that red zone work. Um, it just depends on how they decide to use them. And the tight ends, it's, it's still yet to be seen, but it's going to be interesting to keep an eye out on what we're going to do in that regards versus the Tennessee Titans. And I can't wait to actually talk about Tennessee, okay? Just so that you all can understand why I'm saying the things I'm saying right now. So stay tuned to this video so you can hear me talk about Tennessee and what we're going up against, okay? All right, so with that being said, let's shift over real quick to um, our offensive line also doing their thing. 
It ain't looked the best that we've seen in over five, six years. So hopefully they can continue what they started in preseason. And if so, guys, it's going to be hard to beat the Miami Dolphins, okay? The offensive line is going to start to change the opinions of the rest of the league about the Miami Dolphins. Mark my words. Let me get my water in. All right. Now, on to defense, all right? I love it, I love it, I love it. Our defensive line, Cam Wake and Robert Quinn are going to be coming on those edges hard. Our tackles um, with our um, basically um, interior defensive linemen. Um, that's where we have to watch out for, seeing how well they play. Not only them, but the linebackers as well. People are, aren't that high on the linebackers. But, guys, I'm telling you, give Raekwon McMillan the, the, enough time in this season, you're going to actually be very happy at his production. I'm calling it, guys. You're going to be happy at what he puts out this year, okay? Also, um, Kiko Alonso, I've said it before. Kiko Alonso is actually a good run linebacker. He, he, Kiko Alonso gets in the hole. He finds that hole and he gets there. He gets where he needs to be. Now, tackling has been an issue for Kiko. And that's the problem. Even though he's where he needs to be, we have problems tackling. But a lot of times he slows the offensive player down enough for the help defense to come. But if he improves the tackle, it'll be a lot more losses. Okay, a lost yards, all right? So I'm excited about the line, linebacking core guys, Rayquan McMillan, um, Kiko Alonso. Um, Jerome Baker, who has just come on strong in preseason. I'm excited about the linebackers. People are still a little negative about them, but I, I'm telling you guys, let's see this game one, what happens. Don't get bent out of shape because of a long run in one of the preseason games and, and Sue start snickering at us. Don't get all bent, to shape, bent out of shape. Trust me, they're going to have an impactful season, all right? Now, the secondary with the um, Rashad Jones and TJ, they're going to be holding it down. Mink is just going to be bouncing around, and I love it against Tennessee. Our secondary should have a field day against Tennessee. Let me, you know what? Let's go ahead and jump into Tennessee because I, I can't hold it anymore. I got to talk about them, okay? I got to talk about what we're going up against. All these people and analysts picking Tennessee, it's ridiculous. If you know like I know, it is ridiculous. And if you don't know like I know, I'm about to tell you like I know so you can know like I know. Hopefully that made sense because I know. All right. So, Tennessee, let's go ahead and break down their team, okay? Let's say, you know what? Let's start on, um, let's start offense, okay? Their right tackle, okay? Their right tackle, Jake, Jake Cochlin, I believe. Jake Cochlin, their right tackle. Last year, he went out with the ACL. He's coming back this year from an ACL. So we still don't even really, really know what we're going to get. Not to mention, even right now at this moment, they don't even know if he's technically going to even play because he's having knee problems. You see, they're, they're, the, the theme of what I'm going to talk about with Tennessee is banged up. Let's just talk about that. That is the theme for Tennessee coming into the Miami game. Not to mention, they're on the road. They're coming to us, guys. All right? The theme is Tennessee is banged up trying to get a win versus Miami. Not going to happen, okay? So their right tackle, who Cam Wake is going to be eating up if he plays. See, that's the key. The right tackle coming off of ACL and his knee is hurting right now. If he plays, Cam Wake's going to eat him up. And if he doesn't play, we already know. Most teams, your right tackle, the, the backup ain't even close to the, to the starter. Cam Wake's going to have a field day, guys. If you got the Dolphins D in fantasy, get ready. I do. I have the Dolphins D. Ask the guys in the fantasy league. They already hate me. All right. Now let's move on to the left tackle on the other side. This is where it gets interesting. I got to give it to him. Um... Taylor Lewin or something like that. Taylor Lewin is their left tackle. Hey, I'll be honest. The kid's a stud. He's a stud. I'll call it what it is. All right? So they do have a gym on that O-line. Um, Taylor Lewin or whatever. Now, he is the highest play, paid offensive lineman in the NFL. Did y'all know that? You probably didn't. He is the highest paid O-lineman in the NFL, making $80 million five years, $50 million guaranteed. But guess what, baby? You get to see Robert Quinn this week. And I already know Robert Quinn knows. He's already done scouted. You already looked at film. He said, oh, this is the highest paid guy in the league on the O-line. So this is as, bad, as good as they come. Let me put that work in. You know Robert Quinn is chopping right now. He's he chopping at the beast. He's excited about it. Robert Quinn, because these are those moments you get to prove something. You get to prove something. The highest played O-lineman in the league I get to rush against, oh, I'm coming. 
He better be on it. So he's not going to get a break. Robert Quinn is going to make that man work like no other. Now, if you, if you hear me on my live stream saying, there go Robert Quinn, that's enough said. That's going to be an indication of Robert Quinn's entire season. That's going to be an indication of what he's going to put in his entire season. If he beast in this first game against the best um, left tackle in the game, one of the best, but the highest paid might as well be the best, then you, this is an indication of what he's going to do this season. So I'm looking forward to it. Robert Quinn, if you beast out, we know that we're golden this year. Defensive ends are going to be clashing. So that's a huge battle, guys. I'm not guaranteeing he's just going to win the battle because, hey, you got to put some respect on Mr. Lewin's name. Taylor Lewin, I believe that's his name. You got to put some respect on it. The man earned his bucks. So you got to respect it. But at the end of the day, it's a battle you got to watch. And that's going to be exciting, guys. Because if Robert Quinn getting in there, and Dolphin fans, you should be jumping up and down because, hey, it don't get no better than that. All right? Let's move along, all right? Um, their wide receiver, Rashard Matthews. Y'all all know who Rashard Matthews is, okay? Um, banged up. He limited right now. He got a knee problem. He limited. And they say he might play. He limited. But limited reps. He may not be able to get all the um, plays that he usually get in the game. They're already banged up, man. So that's your right tackle messed up. Don't even know if he's playing. Now you got Rashard Matthews banged up. What do you want? Then, then you go, you keep going to their tight end. We Everybody know who Delaney Walker is, okay? We know who Delaney Walker is, all right? Now, they say he's going to play, but he's on the injury report with an undisclosed injury. Let me tell you what an undisclosed injury means, y'all. He's 34 years old. That's what that means. Y'all don't want to disclose his injury. You ain't got to. Just look at that age. He's 34. That's his injury, okay? That's the reality. Any injury is killing him right now. If you're not just coming in healthy, you hurting. You 34. In the NFL, playing tight end, you've been blocking so long, hitting so long. No, man, buddy, you ain't going to be as effective as people think. Come on. Y'all call it how it is, man. All right, let's move along. Then you got another wide receiver on the other side of Rashard Matthews who's probably going to start, um, Corey Davis. Now, here's the interesting thing about Corey Davis. Corey Davis was a rookie last year, okay? Corey Davis was the number five overall pick in the draft. Hey, number five overall pick, he got to be a stud. But guess what, guys? Last year, he stayed with health problems, stayed with um, health issues, okay? Last year, he only put in 34 receptions for 375 yards and a, no touchdowns. Didn't even find the end zone. So this is really his rookie season to me. This is his breakout season because last year, he hampered, hampered with injuries. So what are we going to do? Are we going to get it done? That, that's fine out, Xavier Howard. That's fine out, Bobby McCain. You going to let this little scrub come in and do you in? I don't think so. You better not. Guy who ain't even, wasn't even on the radar last year, couldn't even find the end zone. Y'all gonna let him get in there on you? You better not. And TJ McDonald and, and Mika and Rashad, you better not let it happen over the top. Cause that's who they're banking on. They're banking on Corey Davis to have a good season this year. No, not against us. Not against us, buddy. Not against us. You're gonna have the same thing. You're gonna keep on having them health issues cause we gonna be laying that hat on you. I don't care if it come with 15 yards. As long as they don't kick his eye. But we're going to be laying that hat, all right? All right, now, going on the running back. They're going to be doing a running back by committee, guys. Um, they got Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis. They'll be sharing the rock. Neither of them were 1,000-yard backs last year. Now, Derrick Henry, last year we played them. By the way, we played Tennessee last year, and we beat them, okay? Last year we shut Derrick Henry, um, Derrick Henry down. We shut him down. Couldn't do nothing. We ain't let him get nothing, okay? But Deion Lewis, that was another story. Deion Lewis, actually, I think it was like 122 yards he put on us from the line of scrimmage. So, but he, he never two on the depth chart. Derrick Henry never one right now. So, we got, we're going to see because we know that our interior line and linebackers, they got to show us something. This is the game. So, I mean, they don't have a dynamic backfield, but at the end of the day, it's something that you just can't sleep on. All right. So, that, but it's still a plus for us. Last but not least on their offense, I just talked about the elephant in the room, Marcus Mariota, okay? A running quarterback. Let me put, hold on. Let me sit there because I'm, you know what? Let me tell y'all something, okay? Dolphin fans, my Dolphin fans, Dolphin Nation out there, let's talk, okay? I need y'all to stop, man. I need y'all to stop. If, if you want your team to win and you want your team to change their old habit, habits, 
then stop living in them. Stop getting on these on these comment sections and stuff. Oh, we can't stop running quarterbacks, so we're gonna have a long day, this and that, that and this. It's the past. You keep talking as if it's gonna happen, then it might as well. If you expect your team to be better, then talk about the things that they are going to change. Like stopping running quarterbacks. Okay? Like stopping running quarterbacks. Let's stop saying, oh, well, we have problems with running quarterback. No, our old teams have problems with it. Our new team don't have problems with it until they have problems with it. Let's just get that out the way now. Stop talking negative about the Miami Dolphins. Stop. You're a fan. Think about it. Think about it. What come out of your mouth is powerful. It moves. All right? Positivity. You ain't got to even have the optimism, optimism, just positivity. Stop with this where, hey, we have problems with running quarterback. Man, Marcus Mariota finna get, man, he finna get ramsacked all day. Ramsacked, okay? That's just a fact, okay? The man ain't even play all 16 games in a season yet. This will be his fourth season. First three seasons, he ain't even play all 16 games yet. He been having health issues, all in his legs, something about his legs. Always, okay? 2015, 2016, he grew as a quarterback. 2017, he took a decline. And it wasn't like an old kind of the same decline. He took a decline. The man had 15 picks last year. One per game because he played 15 games. 15 picks. He was good for one a game. Come on, baby. Dolphins, pick six. That's where the point's coming from. That's where the prediction coming from. Come on, Mariota. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm predicting we're probably going to get two on you. You know why? Because the coach, crazy self in Tennessee, has given him the green light to let it rip. If y'all ain't seen the highlights out of Tennessee, coach is telling Mariota, let it rip. They can't rely heavily on the running game. They can, the only thing the running game going to give them is some sort of balance. But they're going to be a passing team. But guess what? All those receivers I just talked about, they banged up. But it, not only that, they're young. Outside of Rashard Matthews, they got young receivers, man. Corey Davis, what did I tell you? He was a rookie last year, had all these health issues. They young, man. The other guy who I didn't even mention, he young. They babies, man. We, we man, they not finna be coming. They not finna be doing that to us. They either, they either too young or too old. The tight end, Delaney Walker, man. Come on, y'all. That's what it is, undisclosed injury. Yeah, it's called 32. Now, it's some beast in the league that's 32. And Delaney Walker, hey, you, you are you going to be that? I don't know, man. I don't know. You, you play on the line. It ain't like you're a running back and stuff. You play on the line. You've been in more contact than anything throughout these years, man. No, y'all. No, that's just, that, listen, it's just not the case, okay? Now, listen, let's, let's go on to the defense because I actually have some notes on the defense, y'all. Let me, let, me, let me get my notes together. All right. First of all, they run a 3-4 defense, okay? They run a 3-4 defense, and um, which is kind of unique because that gives them four linebackers, okay? All right. So, first and foremost, remember the theme of all of this. They just banged up. Derrick Morgan, their left outside linebackers, he got knee issues. He's limited. Already got issues, all right? Then you got um, Harold Landry is out. He's out. I don't know if that has changed. What this is on my back. Um, I don't know if that's changed, but he's out. Um, Malcolm Butler, he's back. Y'all, well, boy, I had reports that he may not play. I was like, oh, boy. But, hey, y'all lucky. I'll give y'all that gym. He's dealt, those are two things good about their defense, okay? Let me give y'all those, all right? Um, three things actually good about their defense. Let me be honest. Malcolm Butler, okay? He, he's going to be playing corner, so we're going to see how that turns out. All right. Not only that, Jarrell Casey, y'all. He's a defensive tackle. All right. Many people don't know who that is. He's actually one of the best defensive um, tackles in the league. Many people don't know much about him, guys. But Jarrell Casey, he he, I I, I gotta give him his respect. I've been looking at stats, you know, reading the articles and everything. He's coming on. He's he not coming on. He's come. He's come on, all right? I don't even know. I got to I gotta look that up. I don't know if he made the Pro Bowl or not, but he's young. Hey, they got a defensive tackle in their kid, all right? Um, Wesley Woodard, that's a plus. He's 32. He's 32. At first sight, you think, hey, he, he's old. 
But at right outside linebacker, he's he's actually seen a resurgence. Okay? Last year he had 124 tackles combined, okay? He ain't had that much since um 2012 when he put up 117. So that's pretty good. Now what that but that, that, that does get a little tricky to me because I love when I see linebackers with tons of tackles. But it also tells me, hey, people run it down your throat and you just gotta tackle more. But that's not the case with um, Water. He putting that work in, man. He's sacrificing that body, but he's 32. He's 32. Will he repeat that again? Because his career in 2012, he had that 117. Then it's been iffy, iffy, iffy. And then last year, just all of a sudden, with Tennessee, he just had a resurgence, 124 combined tackles. And it's like, whoa, he done woke up. But hey, 32 now, is he going to be able to repeat that? You know, I can't say the same for 32-year-old, um, what's his name? We all know him. Arakpo, um, Brian Arakpo, can't say the same for him. He, uh, full-time Pro Bowler, he hasn't really had the um, resurgence like that. I mean, it ain't trash, but at the end of the day, there were times you were putting up 10 and 11 sacks and nine, and now he has seven with like half the tackle. So I can't say the same about him, but Tennessee's defense as a whole, their weak point is linebacker, guys. That is their weak point. Yeah, they may have Wood, Woodard, but they run four linebackers. They're hurt. They're beat up at linebacker. Their corners outside of Mal Malcolm Butler, I'm not impressed. And there have been reports that, hey, they're good at, in the secondary. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. I, and I do my research. Trust me, I do. I, I You know, I read up on every player. I, I go and try to watch some of their highlights, look at film, what they do well, this and that. I even try to go see if they done got burnt and stuff like that. I'm not impressed. I mean, I'm not totally like, oh, they're boo-boo trash, but I'm not impressed. Our secondary should be good. I mean, our receivers should be good. All right, it's gonna be a battle. But where we're gonna win the battle on the Dolphins offense, Tannehill, I'm one who keeps saying, stop with the short passes, stop with the this and that. But this is a game based off of the defense we're playing. We can eat them up all day on the short passes. We can eat them up all day on the intermediate passes, guys. All day. All day. All day. Just eating, eating. Seven yards here, 11 yards there. 14 yards here, 16 yards there. We can eat them up all day. And then whenever they finally want to come up, we go deep. When, when, when Drake start pounding that ball down their throat and putting Jarrell Casey to work, all day. Then we go deep. It's game planning. I think Gates ready for this one, guys. Gates is ready for this one. We know we're going to see some new looks on their offense. But they, we know they didn't show everything in preseason. But look at your wide receivers, man. They beat up. And they're young. They, they don't even have that full NFL mind yet. Mm-mm. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. This is the game, guys. Miami Dolphins go 34-17. You heard it here first. Go ahead in the comment section and say I'm crazy. When it happens, you're going to have that hush mouth. You're going to have that hush mouth. You ain't going to say nothing. Trust me when I tell you, this is the opening game where we're going to be able to show some people stuff. And you, we already know what the haters going to say. We know what ESPN going to say. Oh, Miami pulls out a win on Tennessee, but it's one of those games you got Marcus Mariota coming back from injury with a young receiving core. Still hasn't found time to get jailed with rhythm yet. Uh, plus, you know, this and that, that and this, that. They got just injuries everywhere. They're going to make excuses of why the Miami Dolphins won. They're going to make excuses. That's, that's exactly what it's going to be. That's all it's going to be, guys. But get ready for it, all right? Get ready for it. Get ready for the W. Get ready for the excuses. I'm excited because seeing game one of football, and it's going to go this way. See, man, we're going to eat it. I, I, I just can't wait to see Robert Quinn. I can't wait to see him on this highest, this highest paid offensive lineman in the league. Hey, he coming. Robert Quinn coming, baby. He coming. We gonna see. You might as well pay him some of that money when the game over. I promise you that. We coming, baby. Woo! Miami Dolphins, hey. Finn Nation, that's my analysis on this game. I'm telling you, this is gonna be a 34-17 event. Um, get excited because you're going to have a lot to watch that's going to be exciting in this game, guys. And this is without Devontae Parker, as I stated earlier. Um, y'all tell me what y'all think. How y'all think the game going to go down? What matchups do y'all want to see? I'm telling y'all, that offensive lineman versus Robert Quinn, that's what I want to see. 
I don't want to see nothing. I, that's that's the matchup I want to see. Ain't nothing else even intriguing out there for me. Ain't nothing else. Cause we gonna eat up them linebackers all day. Amendola is too nifty. Kenny Stills is too fast. He, Malcolm Butler better be out there on him. He better be. But then you got the other side. Albert Wilson gonna be getting them comeback routes all day. All day, y'all. I'm telling you, King and Dre catching that ball out the backfield. They running a 3-4. Man, this is, I'm telling y'all, they gonna be running, we're gonna be running through them tackles, y'all. We're gonna be running through them tackles. We're gonna be picking up chunks of five, six, and seven at a time running that ball. I'm telling you. Then they gonna bring a safety down. Kenny steals them, they're gonna have a field day. And Mendola and them gonna be hitting them out routes. They, I'm telling you, it's gonna be it's gonna be Tannehill's gonna have a 300 plus yard day. Two touchdowns. That's what I got. That's what I'm. A, that's my prediction, guys. This is TD Fans Talk. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. We're gonna be here all year, all week, every week. We're gonna be live. We're gonna be uh, during the game. You're gonna be getting live reactions. Tune in to TD Fans Talk. We continue to grow. I'm here. I'm, I'm by that 850 subscribers, and we on our way to nine. Then soon a thousand, two thousand, four thousand, eight thousand, sixteen, thirty-two. Hey. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Fans Nation, stand up. Let me know that you're here. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Like the video. Guys, this is our year. You got to get behind us. Stop talking about that running quarterback stuff, all right? This is TD Fans Talk. I'm signing out. That's my prediction. Miami Dolphins. Fans up.